Sipu Steel. This is a map that a lot of people find confusing initially. Um, it's a really cool map, probably the most interesting of all maps played in Highlander, just because of the sheer amount of strategies involved. First off, I'm going to do a quick overview of the map so that you understand what's going on. You have points A, B, C, and D. You only have to capture point E in order to win. This is point E. It's right in the center of the map. The other points wrap around it in an anti-clockwise direction. You can only capture points A, B, C, and D in order, but E can be captured at any time. Capturing each of these points makes it easier to capture E. I'll explain why as we go through. At the start of the game, blue team can get into point A and point B. Point A leads up this hill towards Big Door, which starts shut, and Drop Down, which starts shut. The red spawn is up here. There aren't many calls for A because it doesn't tend to get held for long, uh, but if you do want them, this is Ledge, Window, Cliff, Yard, Hut, Roof, Slope, Barrel, The Point, The Stairs, Drop Down, Big Door. Meanwhile, B is open. This is the spawn tunnel. This leads up to ledge. This area here is ladders. This is the platform. This is secret. This is the red spawn. This is connector. This is BC connector. And this area here is the drop down that opens once A is captured. Once B has been captured, this doorway here opens and the red spawn moves back. Here's the course for C. This is cliff or rocks. This is connector again. This area is lower. This is balcony. Bridge, stairs, and ramp. Once C is captured, these bridges extend onto the point at last, allowing classes other than the scout and soldier to be able to reach it and capture. Between C and D, you have this corridor that goes past one spawn door and another spawn door. And this is D. Between D, A, and E, you have this area called Lobby. Some players call it White Room. This connects the big door at A. This doorway leads to E. This is Red's original spawn that they would no longer have after B is captured. So from Lobby, you would refer to this door as Big Door. This is E. This is D. This is the control room. And this is the control room connector, which joins up to D as well. Moving on to the last point, this is the DE connector. These spawn doors shut after D is captured. This whole area here is the red battlements. This is lower. This is pipe. This is balcony. These are the red windows. On the other side, we have connector. We have the blue battlements, we have the blue windows. Once D is captured, um, the catwalks also gain guardrails to make it harder to be knocked off while trying to capture. Let's move on to the actual gameplay now. Red team have to decide how they're going to defend initially. Whether they're going to make any attempt to defend A, which is very hard to hold and is usually a throwaway, or if they're going to entirely focus their defense on holding B. Let's assume the latter for now, because that's the most common strategy. The red NG is going to probably build a sentry down here. You usually see a dispenser here. You'll also see them moving their sentry back here if the initial one gets destroyed or is under heavy fire. The ledge is going to be held by the soldier usually, sometimes the demo. Then the combo we're going to hold around this area. You usually see a sniper and a heavy up on the ladders. Demo's going to leave some sticky traps in the tunnel. Here are a few of them that I've seen. Mission begins in 
What are blue team doing? There's a few ways they can have their approach. Assuming that red team aren't really making much effort to defend A, they're going to send their entire team here, minus the medic who is going to sit in spawn. You might sometimes see the red spy lurking around here, maybe the sniper or the demo initially, but these days it's pretty much given up. They may choose to send some of their team, sometimes the demo, sniper, soldier, spy even, towards B, just to assess what's going on and to just irritate them here so they aren't completely at ease while A is being captured. Once A is captured, big door and drop down are going to open. Blue have some options now. There are two main strategies you're going to see at play here. An E rush or a slow cap. In any rush, Blue are going to send as much of their team as they can afford through Big Door, through Lobby, and attempt to capture E with their jumping classes, while everyone else defends the area, preventing Red from killing those classes. It's a very risky strat, as if it fails you've just wasted a lot of time, but it can get you a stunningly good time on the map if you pull it off. If that's happening, red team are going to be trying to get through connector here and through spawn, they're going to be rotating out of B to defend this point. It's because of this rush that red team will often send their flank classes to E ahead of time so that you can see if blue are attempting to sneak in. Hopefully red will very quickly deal with this attack or else they're going to be in real trouble. If they do deal with that, blue have wasted a lot of time and red are at a big advantage. However, it can also weaken red's defences greatly at B because they've rotated out of B to defend E. They should leave some players behind, usually the engineer and a few players to support him. Generally, you want your flank wherever blue aren't actively attacking and your combo wherever blue are actively attacking. So you probably want to start with your combo holding B, your flank watching E. If it becomes apparent that the main force of blue is coming to E, then your combo are going to rotate to E. Otherwise, you'll keep your combo in B. If you do rotate your combo, your flank then want to swap and assist the NG of B. Assuming we don't go for the rush, blue team are going to be trying to attack B. They are still going to send some of their team to E, just to try and split red's numbers between defending the two points. Even if it's just one scout, it'll slow them down a bit. And that scout isn't really trying to actually capture the point, he's just forcing red to actually come over here and kill him at which point he can run away, get health, come back, and just be annoying, be a constant irritation without ever actually achieving much. Meanwhile, Blue have to get in here. This can be really tricky, because if Red are up on the ladder here, their sniper can even have a sightline through this window, so it can be very risky getting your medic here. Equally, this is a very tight space. The red demo can just spam down here and kill pretty much all of the attackers if they're all grouped up here. Because of that, this is another reason that sometimes coming through E is a good idea, because you can even potentially get your flank classes in through the back to attack B. This usually isn't going to be the best angle, because the sentries will still be able to see you, and you're nearer to red spawns, so it's much harder to actually attack from there. Plus, you have to get through whatever's defending E on your way, and they will know you're coming. Eventually, once Blue are confident they've at least gain control of this area, they can risk getting their medic way out into the tunnel, coming up through main and ubering to destroy the sentry. Um, obviously, as ever, Pyro is going to be crucial here, as is NG. He's going to be wanting to back his sentry out to the platform. This can be quite a long period of the game, with both teams rotating between B and E quite a lot, so there are many ways it can go. But eventually, you're probably going to see B captured. As that's happening, Red usually want to back out and defend the connector. This is a really good spot to defend from, because at this point you're trying to defend both point C, which you can defend from here, and point E, which you can also defend from here. Meanwhile, Red's flankers need to be looking after the other side of the map, over at Lobby. Blue are probably going to send their flank and snipers up through the BC connector up to Cliff, where they can spam into the back of the main connector, and also can attack anyone holding at point. Eventually, Blue should be able to force 
red team out of here, either with an uber or just by overwhelming them. At which point you're going to see red team either abandoning C entirely and just giving it up. The other option is you'll see red team defending from the balcony and bridge with the medic inside here near the spawn, able to escape if anything goes wrong. Again, while blue team are attacking C, they should also be putting at least some force on E just to split numbers. Once C is captured, we're now really in the end game. You're going to see red team defending E and D almost as one. The best place for the red combo now is to be across the other side of E point in the lobby. This way they're placed nicely between E and D. You're generally going to be seeing them in the front area of the lobby, focusing on attacks coming from A and Big Door. They can rotate this way to shoot anything coming from Connector, and lastly they can rotate through the back to defend D from C attacks. Meanwhile, the flank and often the engineer are going to be mainly in the E area, keeping an eye on lower on Connector, and also occasionally rotating through Spawn to keep an eye on the corridor, and indeed C. Really it's the flank job to work out where the blue team are going to attack from before they arrive so that the red combo are prepared for it. If red lose D, they're really on their last legs now. They've lost these spawns, so they have a really long route round to attack the last. At this point, blue are going to be flooding in from B and A as they wish it's going to be very hard for Red to maintain hold of the lobby, which is probably still their best place to hold from if they can. Um, but generally, the way this last attack goes is, having captured D, Red team have been wiped. So now Blue have most of their team on the point capturing, and they'll have some combo classes up ahead, looking after the D-E connector, preventing anything from even reaching the point. E is an excruciatingly slow point so it really does require pretty much your whole team on it to capture it in any realistic amount of time. The people on the point are mostly going to be looking out for red team's flank coming from connector and lower, and it's going to be pretty straightforward once they have control of this connector. That is pretty much all there is to CP Steel. It can feel like a very confusing map, but really it all just comes down to splitting between attacking E and attacking whichever point you have to deal with next. The red combo just needs to make sure they're in the best position to defend both points. As ever, I hope this was useful. Check out my other Highlander tutorial videos as they will be helpful. I've also recently done a medic guide. I'll try and get you all a Borneo video for next week. Good luck on CP Steel.